everybody welcome back to my channel i wore the wrong clothes like it's 60 65 and beautiful down in the valley but up here on the mountain a little chillier unfortunately today we are going to be talking about genetic diseases and the reason we're talking about genetic diseases is because avalon was tested and has one for those of you who are wondering why was she tested uh several reasons Hey everybody, I just wanted to throw in a quick reminder that it helps me out so much when you interact with these videos. So liking the video, commenting, sharing, that all helps. And subscribing. Subscribing is completely free. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell to turn on the notifications. So yeah, if you guys could help me out, that'd be great. Thank you. Later on in a few years, I plan on breeding both my mares. And also we were talking with a few people about doing either some clinics or sending Avalon to a trainer. So we wanted to rule out anything possibly medical that could be causing her to act the way she acts. Under saddle, very stubborn, tries to lay on you. Well, that's new, that's recent. Pulling through the bit, avoiding any bit pressure. Keats have been checked, everything. So let's get into it and talk about Avalon. Anyways, so Avalon has what's called HERDA. Here's the definition of it. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what the definition of it is. Uh, it's been a lot of information the last few days talking to a couple of vets and doing my own research online. So, it's not a good thing. Uh, here are some images of what it can look like, what it can do to a horse. Not a good thing at all. Is it Abby? Now, the good thing about it, we're going to talk about this because I did not realize this. The good thing is she has one copy making this particular gene recessive. So if you guys remember anything from school, you got recessive and dominant. And she does not have a copy from each parent making it to where this will never happen to her to this extent. It will never ever happen. Now the bad thing with this disease is from what my vets have told me, is that really the only treatment when they start to have their body do this it from tack i guess mostly it's from starting horses and their skin becomes really stretchy and thin and breaks really really easily and don't worry for anybody wondering they have hay at the bottom of the hill they're just picking on the little bit of grass that they have here but the only treatment they can really do when a horse has this and it gets to the point where it starts to affect them and do all this tearing to their skin is euthanasia. Now the good thing with Avalon, and hello Miss Kamani, what are you doing you filthy little bug? You so filthy, you so filthy. I know, yeah. <laughs> so the good thing with Avalon is she has one gene, one copy of it and she is a carrier which is the bad thing so that means if she ever has any babies which we're going to talk about that too uh if she ever has any babies it will have a 50 percent chance to go to the full which obviously we don't want now i do believe even though she has one copy and it'll never get to the extent where her skin is falling off like this we do believe that that is what's still affecting her. We do believe that's why she has the protein buildup bumps. And we do believe that's why she reacts like this to bug bites. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Put a fly sheet on her. Put a fly spray on her. We have. And within a day, that fly sheet is tore. It looks like it went through a grater. Like, it's just absolutely tore up completely. It is, from what my understanding is, the vet says that... Poco bueno, if I said that wrong, I am so sorry. And Metallicat, they, they or their bloodlines have one copy. So some of these horses go on to be great show horses. If, you know, like her, they have one copy and it doesn't ever get to the point where their skin is falling off. Some horses are just put out to be pasture pets the minute that the owners find out that they have this. Whether it's one gene or two gene, everybody is completely different on that, on their opinion of that. But if she ever were to have skin that's completely falling off, <laughs> uh, she would have to be euthanized. That is the best bet for it because you can't, when they have such thin, stretchy skin, you can't really put it back together from what the vets have told me. 
Now, so here's where I'm probably going to get some hate on this. Um, I won't be breeding her. She will be spayed when I get the money. Now, the reason for this is I do plan on traveling with her, making her my barrel horse, getting into competitions and stuff when we get her training figured out later down the road. Hopefully in the next year or so, but obviously there is no time limit. She is my horse. I am free to take as long as I want with her. That is the great thing about her being mine. <laughs> uh, now somebody might be wondering, why aren't you going to breed her? It's safe. Now it, it has been proven, yes, that it is safe to breed them if they have one copy and you are smart about it and you don't breed to a stud who has a copy and then full on passing two copies and then them getting these skin lesions to where they have to be put down. Here's my thought process. Could I pick a stud, be smart, be safe, you know, make sure the stud's tested? Could I do that? And you know, there's a, there's a 50, percent chance that the bull will get her one copy and be a carrier like she is and not have major issues just have the protein bumps and hives yeah could it also be you know that baby never gets that gene and is completely healthy and completely fine and is not a carrier yes but the way that I look at it is I want to be a responsible owner and a responsible breeder not necessarily like a big time breeder just like you know Later on down the road, they're older and they go retired, I might want a baby from one of them. But the way that I look at it is now knowing this information, we are also going to test Kamani. You know, make sure she doesn't have anything because with her being recessive, we would have never guessed that's what she had because we thought she had like some muscle disorder or something, which she doesn't. She's all cleared for. The way that I look at it is... I don't want to be a backyard breeder that just breeds and, and continues to pass this on, whether it be one copy or two. I don't care how you look at it. That is just my personal opinion. I want to be responsible and not pass this on. Because we, like the vet said, we do believe that this gene is what's causing her protein bumps to not go away and continue to stay. And her to get massive breakouts and hives just from fly bites you know so that could be affecting her in that way that's what they believe is going on that's why they believe she has such sensitive skin why she doesn't like leg contact because she's very sensitive so now i have to learn how to ride her uh because i've never ridden a sensitive horse i've ridden dull horses and gotten them softer but really sensitive ones i don't think i've ever ridden at least not like her we're just going to follow them here. But to me, it's irresponsible. And I know tons of show people do it. And this is just my opinion. I am not bashing them in any way. This is literally just my opinion on it. To me, it's irresponsible to breed it knowing that they have it. Now, my vet said the reason a lot of people breed that on. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about it several times with Avalon. That there are times she's too soft. Meaning... She's acting up, I go to one rein, stop her, and she goes so soft in that bridle all of a sudden from evading pressure and fighting me to so soft it literally feels like she's going to tumble on top of me. Now a lot of cutting horse people like that really soft, bendable, flexible horse that is extremely soft like that and that's why they continue to braid it on is again what a vet has told me. This is not me pulling things out of air, this is what... I have talked to a couple of vets. That is what the vet has told me. So this is, if I'm not mistaken, in Appaloosas, quarter horses, cutting horses. This is typically when you find these genes. So from what my vet said, Avalon up here, who's walking away when it's all about her. So we're going to film with Kamani for a second here. Avalon has some sort of bloodline that goes back to Poco Bueno. So Kamani will be getting tested, make sure she doesn't have any health issues. He's so pretty. And if she doesn't have anything, she will be bred. Now, that's a whole other topic because I don't believe in breeding a horse till they're seven or eight. Number one, that's typically when they're done growing. I don't think a young horse, two, three, four years old, should be carrying a baby. That's, again, I know tons of people do it. This is my opinion on it. Um, that's just how I look at it. Also, I believe, you know, they're older like that. You can really tell whether you like 
their temperament or not and whether you want that bread on or not. I feel like, you know, seven or eight years of training, you'll know whether you like that horse enough to want one with that type of temperament or not. Yes. So yeah, she's going to be seeing a chiropractor next. And that's kind of all the information I know about it. Um, so we do believe because of this, these protein bumps will never go away. Uh, protein bumps typically go away or they stay. Now the vet also said, <laughs> because of this, now knowing that she has this genetic disease, uh, she could get more throughout her body. Now they don't hurt her. You guys have seen my protein buildup video. If you haven't, it's literally the video right underneath this one on this channel here that you guys are currently on. So you guys can go watch that and there's more in-depth information on that. That's a bit of a longer video. And she could get more. Now they don't bother her and there's really no point in biopsying or surgically removing them all because they could just cause more stress to her skin and bring it back. Especially with this genetic disease that she has. Uh, <laughs> the only thing the vet said is if she gets protein bumps in the area where the saddle, the bridle, the blanket, the tack goes, obviously then we will have a discussion on probably retiring because a bunch of bumps on me, whether they affected me or not, I wouldn't want a saddle and a person riding me. So let's just pray that she doesn't ever get them where tack goes. Obviously if she does, perfectly fine. She'll just be retired probably just be a buddy for this one and now I'm probably gonna get some questions on why I'm spaying her again I do plan on getting her trained up and riding better and being my barrel prospect to get me into faster times to see if this is something I seriously want to do or not and it's just not worth it to me to chance taking her to a fairground and a stud gets out or she gets out and she gets pregnant and passes on this gene. It's just not worth it to me. Also, the way I'm looking at it is if I ever have to sell her, because you never know, 10 years down the line, I could be in a really bad place where I can't afford her and I'm not going to starve her. Or I could be in a great place. You never know. <laughs> so um, by spaying her, I also get to control that nobody is ever going to breed her knowing that she has this genetic disease that it could be passed on and if that and if they're irresponsible and breed her to the wrong stud hello miss uh, okay uh breed her to the wrong stud and then they pass that on to the foal and then the foal has things like this happen to its body and it's just irresponsible in my opinion so she will be spayed for safety and also the vet believes, you know, kind of like a dog or a cat, it'll bring her hormones down. And that could help a lot and calm her down a little bit under saddle. I like her speed. I like her big stride. I just, I'd like a little bit more brakes, please. <laughs> so it's, to me, it's important to not breed it on. I know in the show world, there are lots, lots of people intentionally breeding this because they like the bendability of the horse. Again, she is going to be seen by a chiropractor and we will not be intentionally breeding her. I don't know when I will be spaying her. I'm planning sometime next year just to get it done quicker and less risk for when I do want to take her to some clinics for training advice, have other trainers ride her, see what they think I should do. You know, people take studs to those. It's not hard apparently for a horse to get out. I mean, she's on 20 plus acres and she goes through for good barbed wire fence. So it's, it's not hard for her to get out of pens. And you never know what a stud's gonna do to get to a mare. So to me, it's just not worth it. The sooner the better, but it's not like urgent. Right now, I just wanna get her training under control. Uh, that'll probably be next year where you're getting into the really harsh cold months. Uh, again, the whole reason I did this is because Number one, I was going to do it anyways before I ever bred her. So I would have found out anyway. But the vet honestly thought she had like PSSM or PSSM1 or 2 or whatever. Because, you know, she thought with how much she likes to avoid pressure, even from leg, even from voice, sometimes under saddle, she just gets really ear pinny if you use your voice to speed her up with no legs. She just pins her ears like so mad. 
when there's not even pressure except for my, from my voice, we thought she had like a muscle problem or something, which she's all clear for, which is great. So I would have found this out sooner or later before I brought her anyway. A lot of people say uh, genetic testing is not important to breed. Um, I beg to differ because if I hadn't known this and let's say I was irresponsible and the stud wasn't tested, we could have made a baby that would just have to be possibly euthanized in a few years at two years old, four years old. So yeah, that's, that's as much as I know from talking to a couple of vets and from looking up what I could on Google. It is really sad that the only treatment um, when the skin starts to tear like that, euthanasia of a two-year-old, four-year-old is typically when they're started. So whatever age you start them. And there are people that start them as one and a half. So, could you imagine you irresponsibly breed this horse? Let's say they didn't test the stud. Let's say they didn't test the mare. And they bred and the baby is dominant, has both copies and obviously is a carrier and is dominant. And let's say it's one of these people that starts their horse at a year and a half or euthanasia because the skin is so stretchy and and, and then that they can't really sew it back together if it's this huge gaping wound. And again, I don't know all the facts. This is just what I've been told by my vets. Okay, but let's just imagine that for a second. And let's just imagine that a year and a half year old horse got started at one and a half. People irresponsibly bred, didn't test. And they go to start this foal and within a couple of weeks, a couple of days, whatever, however long it takes to irritate that skin enough to tear, they have to go put that baby down. All because they didn't test and be responsible for that horse. This is why whether you're planning on breeding or not, you should still, in my opinion, pay the $95 and have your horses genetically tested because it could be behavioral issues. It could be writing issues. It could be training issues. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching.